Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Today we're going to be plumbing the new 115 gallon grow out tub to the 300 gallon reef. And you can see we have some PVC just waiting to connect to this tank. And uh, yeah, it's not gonna be a very long video. It's not gonna be that difficult because it's actually quite easy to plumb this. Um, I've been thinking about it for weeks, so we're gonna just knock it out. Now, let's go and look at what we have for plumbing stuff here, what my plan is. So we're gonna be using a one and a half inch slip slip bulkhead, which I plan on drilling a hole here, just in the center. It doesn't have to be perfect. Of course, I do have to take in consideration, let me move over here that we have a piece of wood. So it's gonna have to be lower, which means I might have to, I don't know yet, but I might have to reprint my screen top just to uh, uh, make it a little bit longer. So I might have to reprint this just to make it longer so it sits up a little bit higher. So I won't really know that until we get into the whole, uh, you know, connecting it and putting water in it to kind of see where it lays out. But my goal is to have the screen top kind of flush with the top here. All right, so if it does ever overflow, the water, of course, will go to the rim, but ideally the water will sit probably halfway up the screen, and uh, that's more than enough for the tub. So that's kind of the plan. Now, of course, we're gonna be using a three-quarter inch uh, lock line, you know, return bulkhead slip. It's supposed to be thread, but they didn't have any thread. So we're gonna do slip slip, and I'm just gonna glue that bitch in there. <laughs> I've done it before, but uh, I'm just gonna glue it in there. Who cares, it'll work. <laughs> add a ball valve, of course, to control the flow. Uh, and add back pressure to the system for the return line. And um, I'm gonna do uh, a hole on the top here for the T in the back. Add a little bit of RO line. I know it's kind of moving around. It'll sit back here and then it will break the side. It, won't, it will, won't cause it to gurgle. So I wasn't, I don't know what term I was looking for that, but uh, yeah, so it doesn't gurgle, but that's pretty much it. Uh, my plan again is to put the drain here and then to put the return right here. And then we just go in the back, connect it, and we're good to go. So. Uh, let's go to move over and start drilling and then uh, yeah, we'll just we'll just kind of fast forward the whole process because it's really again Not that complicated and then we can start adding some water get some salt and uh, Get it done, right? So let's get started Okay, so I was actually gonna like measure it in halfway and yada yada yada. You know something? Nope We're just gonna wing this because why not so that looks good right there as long as we can get the bulkhead in there and screw the nut It's not gonna be a problem. So that looks Good enough for me. Could have used my other drill. Oh, fuck yeah. Let me get the other drill. Freaking battery's dying. I'll be right back. Alrighty, take two on trying to drill this. This one's a little bit better. Well. No turning back now. So uh, just clean off the edges while it's still warm. Get out there. I might actually get the razor blade. Let me see. Yeah. Let me uh maybe the snips. Probably should just get the razor blade and come through and, and get off the extra. No, no, that this will work. All right, let me fast forward this nonsense. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the bulkhead in here. my little wrench here so I made them so that they slip when they get tight enough see how it slipped right there so you know it's tight enough now granted it's gonna be dependent on your glass you don't want to be cranking on it too much you see how it doesn't really move anymore so you can't really over tighten it so you see it has a little bit left but that's good alrighty so we're done with the drain let's go ahead and move on to the uh, return Okay, so my goal is the same thing. I want to get as close to the wood as I can just so I can uh, elevate this up to the surface, uh, not only for surface agitation, but to also break a siphon. Um, I do have a uh, check valve in place for this line, but I always like to be able to break the surface anyways, just in case the check valve was to fail. Uh, it's not a very good one, so sometimes it could. Uh, anyway, so this looks, uh, I mean, it's good enough for me. Let's go ahead and do right there. Again, I'm gonna fast forward and get this junk off here. So 
a little wrench. And you guys can find these wrenches on the website, by the way. They're actually pretty popular. This is the version that doesn't have the 90 in it. I do make a version that brings it out here so you can use it as a little handle. But uh, yeah, they're pretty popular. You see how it slips when it's tight enough? There you go. Okay. Good to go. And then I'll just glue this damn thing in there. So we'll do that. we'll do that in the next clip. Anyway, we're good to go. So uh, yeah, let's move on. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys the layout for the plumbing here in the back of this 1.5 inch. So I've already pretty much pre-cut everything. I was waiting for my phone to charge. If you notice in the previous clip, the light turned off, just wasn't ready. So I went ahead and built the T here with the, uh, the little air escape at the top. I just run a piece of, P, uh, piece of RO line down there. It allows the air to escape so it doesn't gurgle. Uh, simply, I haven't glued any of this yet, but it's just gonna go ahead and go in the back here. Okay, then I'm going to uh, uh, get this here. Come down the piece of pipe and bring this here. I really don't need to come down too far uh, because, I, of course, I still want it to be about the same size. It's about it's pretty close to what it is over there. It'll come down, of course, and then we'll uh, use a whatever the hell it is a union or not a union, a coupling to basically just attach to the original piece. So uh, we'll do some new pipe here, the coupling connect to the old one, and that's it. It's pretty simple, of course. Got to glue all this stuff. And uh, yeah, let me bring you around to the front and show you guys kind of that setup there with the, uh, with the overflow. Okay, so as I mentioned before, I thought that maybe the 3D printed screen would be too short and I was right. It definitely needs to be extended probably like this far. I'll rebuild that tonight, uh, but for now it will work just fine. So going to uh, just connect our uh, normal little piece here, oh, uh, 90 degree. And then the screen just sits on top, it goes in, that's it it's on top of course it'll be removable i'll talk about these here at the end of the video uh answer most of the questions that i'm getting <laughs> so but yeah i don't want to get into it right now but anyway uh yeah so that's about it again you can see that the level i'm fixing my watch here the level is still a little low so again if i print it to be larger it will go back up to where it needs to be so uh other than that that's the setup pretty good pretty easy let's go to move on to the return line okay real quick when it comes to the return line Pretty simple, just gonna come out to a 90, straight down to a ball valve, again, to add back pressure to the system, allow me to control the flow into here. It's gonna come down, and I'm just gonna go out with a little bit of pipe, and boom, connect with the, uh, the same kind of uh, coupling. And that's it, very simple connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue all this stuff, get it ready, move the tank back, and I'm actually just gonna do the plumbing because I don't think I'm gonna get the camera underneath the stand. So I'm just gonna do the plumbing, we're gonna come back and check it all out. All right, guys, welcome back. I just finished gluing all the PVC. It turned out pretty good. It wasn't that difficult. Now, there are a few things that I want to uh, kind of make some changes to. I'll probably add a few more knuckles to the uh, lock line here just to get it up above the surface of the water because I do intend it to be like right here-ish. So I kind of want to make sure that I can get above the surface just for siphoning purposes. And then, as I mentioned before, I will definitely need to reprint this screen top to essentially get it right here. So... I'll have to add, I don't know, an inch or so, inch and a half to that, two inches maybe, and then reprint that tonight, it'll be good to go. Um, but, uh, click that on there. So what my plan is for right now is I'm gonna fill this whole tub up with RO water, which we might as well start doing that now while I'm talking. So I'm gonna flip the switch, grab my line, and we got a hundred and, I don't know how many gallons, 135 left. Ooh, spinning around to the dirtiness. Yeah, you guys know when I do projects, my fish room goes to shit. So I'm uh, just gonna start filling that up. All right, so the plan is to get it to probably just here on this uh, piece of PVC. I'm gonna throw in Fritz, uh, throw in the power heads, get it mixing to uh, 1.026, add a couple heaters, let it sit overnight just to get temperature and good to go. That top will be printed, or that screen, yeah, the screen top will be printed by tomorrow morning. I'll be able to add that and then, of course, add some more water, double-check the salinity. Once that happens, I'll be able to go ahead and turn the valve. Essentially, there's just a ball valve back here, as I showed you guys previously, and then it will, uh, it will just be part of the system. So I'm going to fill this up. I will see you guys in a little while when I start adding the salt, and then uh, I'll see you in the morning. Hey guys, welcome back. So as you can see, the tank is filled up right to the rim of the uh, strainer there. Now, of course, as I mentioned, I'm going to print a new one so we can add more water, but for now, it's good to go. I can definitely mix up the majority of the water uh, and get the salinity and temperature where it should be. So with that said, uh, I went ahead and also added the four Nero 5s. They're at a 100%. 
which is definitely a pretty good amount of flow for this tank. Uh, we'll see how it does long term, but I don't think I'm going to need anything else. There's uh, a ton of surface agitation and looks pretty good, but we won't really know until we get the coral in the tank. So with that said, moving over to the salt. As you guys know, I use the Fritz Blue Box. That's the only salt I've used in this system uh, since I started it. And uh, yeah, I have a little bit left here in this container. So let's go ahead and dump it in. Now, yeah, I probably should uh, measure this out, but yeah, we're just gonna dump the rest of this in there. So that's that. Yeah, trying to hold that with one hand. Let the power heads do the work. And then I'm just gonna add, I don't know, this is a 200 gallon box. I have like one third of this box right now and then just come back in a few hours. Well, it, what time is it? What time is it right now? Let's see. It is, yeah, 23, 27. So I'll come back in the morning and double check the salinity, add more if I need to. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I just added the salt. Now I will probably stay down here and clean for the next hour. So I'll just check the salt before I go up to bed. And if I need to, I will add a little bit more because Fritz tends to uh, mix pretty quickly. It's already starting to clear up as you guys can see. And uh, yeah, we do have four of those power heads, so it shouldn't take very long. Now I did add one heater. It is only 150 watts. I can't find the other ones, but uh, I have it set to 80 degrees. And again, it's gonna be here all night. So if I can get the temperature of this tub close to 79 uh, sometime tomorrow before noon or whatever um, it will work out good when it comes to uh, you know connecting this so our goal is to get the salinity to match the main display and then get the temperature as close to the main display as we can before turning the valve now of course I'm gonna go upstairs here in a little bit and uh, redesign the uh, strainer and go ahead and uh, reprint that out now again I will talk about that towards the end of the video you guys can learn all about that and uh, and be disappointed <laughs> all right so that's about it for right now I will uh, I'll see you guys in the morning all right hey what's up guys welcome back so it is the next day uh, we've had the entire night for the salinity to stabilize and the temperature of this tub to uh, get to 79 degrees now I know I said I was gonna do it in the morning it is 2.30 in the afternoon, so it took a little bit longer with that 150 watt heater, but that's to be expected. I know it's still on, uh, but I do have it set to over 80 degrees. But uh, anyway, so the temperature and the salinity both match uh, the main display. So at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and turn the valve and connect the system. Now, um, I'm gonna go slow because there, of course, it's going to take a little bit of water to get up over this uh, screen here to stabilize it. So I'm gonna see kind of uh, where we bottom out here in the sump. I did have a little extra water here in the sump, so uh, I mean, I tend to have my ATO kick on at uh, when it gets to eight, so I do have a little bit here left over just in case, but uh, yeah. Now, before I turn the valve here, let me explain the screen. Now, this is the second one. Remember I said I was going to print another one uh, that had a longer top here or, or a longer base uh, to stick out. Now, that is the new one from this morning, but it's not long enough. I'm actually uh, printing a new, newer one uh, it's just in the middle of it right now. I actually extended it by another 20 millimeters just to get it up because as you can see uh, That's what she said uh, <laughs> It's still not where I want it to be. It's technically down. I'll, you know, it's not such not quite 20 millimeters But this can uh, go down a little bit farther inside that PVC, but it's good to go. So anyway, uh, oh Here we go cameras being a jerk. So let me go ahead and Get over here and turn the valve. Let me uh, fix my camera because it's apparently being a dick. So one second Okay, so I don't know what that was about. I just charged this gimbal. But anyway, uh, let me go back here and turn the valve. You guys aren't going to see it, but I'm going to turn it just... Can, we do it? can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Oh, maybe. There we go. I'm going to turn it just a little bit. And we're just going to let some water come out. Not going to go crazy fast. Just going to essentially get it attached. And man, this camera is being a dick today. This gimbal anyways. I don't know. It's being weird. Sometimes it does this. I don't know if it's just the battery or what, but it just decides to change direction. So, yeah, I'm going to let that go and uh, fill up and just kind of be part of the system. Of course, I'm gonna keep an eye on the temperature. Okay, so the last thing I wanna talk about here is this overflow screen. Now, you guys have asked about this uh, quite a bit. Uh, it's just about to actually go down into the, uh, the system there. So uh, anyway, uh, you guys have asked about this overflow quite a bit. Now, unfortunately, I cannot make and sell these. Now, the reason for that is uh, Custom Aquariums does have a patent on any type of overflow that has teeth that sticks above the surface that's removable and that has a lid. Now, um, this design I will uh, present to the owner of the company here in the future, and uh, it might be available. You never know. I do have a couple other designs, but uh, I have a pretty good relationship with them. And uh, you know, technically, 
you know, I have such a good relationship that it might not be a problem, but I'm not taking any issue or any chances with that. I don't want any problems. I don't want any more attorney fees. Um, so this overflow screen is not available for sale. It is for personal use only. Uh, and uh, that's just how it is until something changes with custom aquariums and maybe they want this design and a couple of the other ones that I have. So. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I can't sell it to you. I know it sucks, but uh, you know that's that's why people pay for patents. They like to keep the design and they like to keep that stuff for themselves so they can improve on it. And I respect that. So uh, anyway, uh, that's about it. I'm gonna let this uh, kind of run over and do its own thing. I'm gonna basically give it the next what I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour while I'm packing orders. It is Friday, so I still got orders I'm trying to get out, even though I can't do coral. But I'm going to let this kind of cycle through the system, and uh, I'll be moving all of this coral and the majority of the fish over to the uh, the new tank. Now, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> there's all these colonies. There's some giant colony here that I just started fragging. Of course, all of the plates. I know it's really blue, and I just got a ton of coral over here. So, yep, and then we're going to get cutting. So... That's about it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned. I am going to be doing the next one will be on the rack system that's going in here. Now, I am going to put a little bit of it already, but I'm going to show you guys this in depth here uh, soon. And uh, you guys will see the new rack system. So until next time, I will see you later. All right. Peace.